What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks for the Asus Zenfone 9. Just some things that I like to turn on and stuff like that. Some things that I think you should know about as well too with this phone. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. So one of the first things uh, with this phone that I'd like to do is go into settings and then we're going to go into display. And then we're going to scroll all the way down and turn on the always on panel lift to check phone you don't really have to turn on but turn on the always on panel is definitely a must so let me show you what it's like without it so when you turn off the screen you can see you know you don't see anything right now we're going to turn on always on display and now look now my screen is on you can see i have the time battery percentage the date and this stays on it's always on guys so it's very quick um, I think Apple is supposed to be introducing the always on display as well too, but it's been on Android for a long time. Very, very nice. Next, you're going to see something called system navigation right here. Now, this is something I absolutely love, uh, especially if you are a you know older Android person. You can do the navigation bar. So you can see we have these little buttons. Now, depending on the size of the phone, I'll turn the buttons on. You might see them in my video because some people ask. Uh, how do you get the buttons right here? Um, so Android switched to default gestures, but you can go ahead and switch it back to these buttons. I think the buttons are easier, especially for your non-tech savvy people. You got your multitask, home button, and then you also have your back button right here. I think it's just easier to keep up with um, as well too. And uh, I don't think there's anything in here really necessary. Um, oh, oh yeah, so let's we can talk about this. The animation speed, which I think is pretty cool. This is a actually a developer option, which is in the settings, which is pretty cool with with this phone. So if I want the phone to feel faster, I would turn everything to 0.5. It turns all the animation to 0.5. Or if you don't want the animations to show at all, you can turn them uh, off. But I, I don't think it looks as pretty, and it just makes the phone instantly feel snappy. Like all the animations and stuff, super super snappy. I'm on here so adaptive brightness I like to turn that off because I like to manually control my brightness night light um, no yeah all this other stuff not super necessary all right so one of the next things I want to show you guys uh, with this phone is in the camera so this phone does have a 50 megapixel camera but the 50 megapixel camera is actually not on by default a lot of people think they're taking shots in 50 megapixels and you're actually not so I'm going to show you how to actually turn that on so you're going to go into that little pop down menu settings and then camera resolution click camera resolution you can see we're on 4x3 but we're not on 4x3 50 megapixels that's your 50 megapixel shot so next time you take a a photo and you have you enable that right it's taking the shot at 50 megapixels resolution so you should instantly see like a um, big jump in detail uh, with your photos and stuff like that so that's definitely something that you know I always really like here alright so we're back in settings and we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to advanced so there's a lot of cool stuff in here that we can do um, I would definitely set up these smart keys so we do have we can set it up to be a customizable application or open Google Assistant just by double tapping the power button. What is the weather like today? Wednesday, it'll be mostly. So we can access that really quickly or we can set it to do a customizable application. And you can see I can choose any application that you know I have installed on my phone. So now when I go ahead and double tap, hold on. You can see it gets me to my YouTube application or whatever I want to uh, very quickly. So that's something that I also uh, really like as well too. And then you also have a gesture to be able to just long press your power button as well. We can also do the same thing, Google Assistant or a customizable application. I'll just leave it to Google Assistant here. And then we also have a swipe uh, for quick access and stuff like that. All right, so next, we're going to go ahead and check out the Game Genie as well. Uh, this is pretty cool, um, but I went over this. When you play games, uh, it'll pop up, uh, which I will show you. Uh, but the Edge tool is also on here as well, too. It's kind of like Samsung's Edge panel. Um, it's not a ton of stuff. You can see it's a little, little, like, little slit on the side. You can barely see it, but you can see I can access applications. Um, you know, I can mess with these settings. I'll slide it over again edit I can add applications and stuff here 
So it's just a quick quick way to get to applications. Um, let's say if you're in another application. So it's just a quick way to sort of like access stuff and bring up. You can say it brought it up in the multitasking as well too. So this is a quick way to like sort of access things uh, without having to do like the multitasking and then because if you if you would have did it like that, you can see I would have to do it like that, right? And that and just doing it through the edge way just made it like way easier to bring up two applications at once. And then and then also like even if this is not in your multitasking box you still have that application there so it's overall it is definitely quicker so I would recommend using it if you're like a, a diehard multitasker right because it just makes sense So next is the one-handed mode so if when you're in settings you're just gonna come to the settings search and type one and it'll bring you to the one-handed mode alright so basically with the one-handed mode they have it set up you can pinch the screen or pull the screen into reach so basically like if I'm in Chrome I go ahead and do a slide down like that and then it brings the screen like further down so I can click on something so that's kinda like the idea of it and then I just click off to go back and then you have an option for show notifications one-handed mode shortcut as well too so I like this I think it's more consistent especially if you're going to use it a lot right so just have the button there this is for people that use it a lot otherwise you might not want it like in the way but if you do use it a lot you have that button there and it does make it like 10 times easier uh, to do so if the phone is still too big for you um, then you have that option there and then we have your sensitivity here if you can raise it to lower high uh, depending on how you like it you just have to get a feel for it All right, guys another cool setting is the uh, double back tap or the back double tap so it's also in advanced settings just you can just type double and you can go ahead and turn that on and what this will do is it gives you a ton of gestures so we have screenshot open camera flashlight screen recorder Google assistant multimedia um, I think this would be best for screenshot or opening the camera so we just tap the back of the phone and it took a screenshot so you don't really have to think about taking screenshots like do some gesture or something like that like other phones uh, this one just has that back so you can see now I have it to open camera if I want to open my camera real quick and you kinda have to get a feel for it so it takes a little time there you go but um, that's also a very cool feature uh, to have on here as well too and uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the something that I really like uh, the audio wizard on here so if you're a big music fan since this phone does have a headphone jack um, yeah you can play with these settings dynamic audio on here uh, you can see a game mode cinema and then you ha have your uh, equalizer you can tune the bass and treble um, so I really like how they have this set up it's really uh, well done as well too also down here in our uh, settings menu or our quick toggles we can actually edit our quick toggles as well too and drag and rearrange them so that's really nice and then we also have our power menu here which is uh, really nice because you might you know be wondering well how do I turn the phone off since I'm using that quick gesture or that long press gesture you would just turn the phone off with the power button right here so you can actually do a lockdown power off restart and screenshot also from here as well too so that takes care of that um, issue right there alright so here is another cool thing in the camera so I'm going to show you guys and it's basically like a gimbal mode here so we're going to go down settings and then you can see stabilization guide so if you're trying to take a video of something like moving really fast like um, you're at like an event like a basket sport event or something like that you can turn stabilization guide on and you can see when taking photos and video keep the small dots inside the circle for optimal stabilization when gimbal stabilization is active zoom ratio is also it's going to zoom in a little bit it's basically what it's saying um, an indicator will be displayed on the screen portrait and slow slow mo modes do not support the gimbal so when you are recording video you should now see these like little dots right here 
So when you're trying to, you should be like, if you're tracking something like moving really quickly, you can see like those little dots will keep it and it'll be a really smooth video other than otherwise, you know, then you um leaving the settings on default, not changing it. So you just have overall better, smoother video for things that are moving fast. All right. So what else do I want to talk about here? Everything else is pretty much, um, it's pretty much um, just your normal Android stuff. There's not a ton of stuff with this phone. Um, the quick sliding thing, yeah, we already did that. Um, yeah, so everything else is pretty much default. Um, I had somebody ask about like the colors and stuff like that. So I can kind of change the colors how I want it. So it's not like a heavy customizable phone. It's not like Samsung phone where I can, you know, do heavy customization and stuff like that. You can see the color also changed. I think that was what he was asking me about. Guys, right, so that's pretty much it. Those are your tips and tricks. Be sure to let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.